and gentlemen, uh, those of you who attended the IESCA Technovation uh, Awards last uh, evening, uh, we had a posthumous award that was uh, uh, bestowed on the late Sri Dr. Shivaling S. Mahan Chetty. Uh, this was the IESA Technovation uh, Sarabhai Award. We have with us uh, this evening uh, Srimati Tasneem Mahant Shetty, and I'd like to request her to please come up on stage and uh, say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know this is the concluding session of your two-day intense conference. And uh, I just um, want to thank the IASA for recognizing uh, my husband, Mahan Shetty, for all that he um, all the difference he made to this industry, to all the people, all the students, all the engineers. And uh, yes, I, thought, I very much wanted to say something yesterday, but I think it is not that easy to speak. Uh, so let me do one thing. I'll just first give you um, the, the points which you can, you know, once again go over. In 89, he founded the, founded the Texas uh, Instruments ASIC Linear Lab and trained a lot of brilliant people today who are heads of huge companies in Bangalore. And uh, in 99, he founded Karnatak Microelectronics Private Limited, popularly known as Karmic, in Manipal. And, um, I can say that he did it differently this t that time from the previous time. And um, then he was, um, through all this activity, he was instrumental in getting the VLSI business into the country. Later on in uh, 2008, he moved from Dakshin Karnataka to North Karnataka back towards his homeland and started a company. Um, uh, in the beginning, it was an offshoot of Karmic in Nesargi. And then in 2011, he formed uh, his own company called Pranjal uh, Microelectronics and Rural Power. And uh, the sole purpose of this Pranjal initially was to uh, uh, teach engineering, um, in a concise and um, um, a short m a way to students who had just given their SSLC exams, most of them from government schools who didn't know any English at all and who were very poor. So he took that forward. Within about two years of the trouble it took, to teach them in that village which had no water or electricity during most of the day. He managed to convey the passion of the subject to such an extent that by 2010 or 11, they um, started uh, working in Qualcomm. So it was an amazing achievement and it was quite uh, a tribute. Uh, you know, you can understand what he did. The classes were held from 9 to 1 o'clock in the night because the power came only at that time. During the day, they used to lift huge boulders and stones and uh, make a dam in the village uh, uh, Nala where the you know, water used to go outside and get wasted. They worked on the gar public garden and grew gro rose plants and you know, banana trees and all. And then they renovated poor villagers. Many of them were widows who couldn't repair their own houses. And with um, gober and with uh, you know, cement, concrete, and everything, you know, they made walls. They took these boulders and you know, added them and made walls. 
So during the day when they couldn't take a class, they were doing all this. So they used to, they built their own lab by renovating two broken houses together. And they uh, created a DSP lab and a, a, another lab next to it. And then we created a mess room at the back for eating. And uh, they made their own greenhouse for having uh, dinner in another place. And uh, converted one old house into partly a library and a classroom. And one part was living quarters. And so with a lot of problem, because the villagers used to just defecate on the roads outside. And it was a horrendous place, very, very filthy to live in. But at the same time, there was a sense of freedom over there. Because of these uh, you know, open spaces, the little mountains, and the trees, and you, know, you, could, you could feel the sense of, um, yes, you felt relaxed and something different. I know it was not Bombay, it was not Bangalore, but whatever it was, it was different. So coming back to what he did, uh, and once those engineers started uh, moving to Qualcomm and started working there, some of them went to Manipal, back to Karmic, and they started working on projects there. Some of them were working for TI, because Karmic was also working for TI, doing TI servicing. So these boys and girls were doing that work. And uh, the pool in Qualcomm began to grow. The pool in TI and Karmic began to grow. And then later on, we also had some of the students going to Invikas recently. And um, some of the older batches, the first two batches, have actually left the company. And um, I talked to some of them, and they were just 23 or 24 years old. Each of them is at least earning one lakh per month. They have made, uh, repaired their houses in their own villages. They've got their sisters married. and. Uh, Thank you. One of the boys came and told him that, you know, in my village there is no school, so I want to open a school. And I've got a team with my father and some village elders, and they've allocated some space for the school, and I'm, I'm going to build a, have a school of my own. So he has started his school also recently. Six of the other engineer boys have joined him, and they've taken their first LKG students into the school. So that's one achievement. And they continue doing their work. They're also joined up for diploma exams and all externally. So they're all busy, I think. They're all as thin as anything, trying to make everything happen at the same time. So you can credit him for training more than 7,000 plus engineers all across the globe. He was a visionary far ahead of his times, and he could probably look into all the challenges of the future, but create simple solutions for it today. As, as our friend Raja Manikam said, no, in the least amount of money, what you could do and create the best, you know, what Vikram Sarabhai also you know, did for India. He devoted himself for the upliftment of the industry and society and created a sense of responsibility in the mind of every co-worker, both for the client and to contribute for the growth of the industry as a whole. And to be, uh, as, as was said earlier, not, to, um, not looking for jobs, but creating jobs for the future. This is, and then later on when he, uh, he has moved through various locations. From Manipal, then he came towards Nesargi. From Nesargi, he moved to Malapur, the next village. He built a huge structure there. For good or bad reasons, he had to move out of there and moved towards the Bagalkot Highway and created a small piece of land where he did some agricultural experiments of storing water and all in very different ways of you know doing drip irrigation and all. From there, he's moved to his father's uh, plot uh, house in Belhungal. And then there was uh, another space in the market area, which was his father's dispensary, as he was a doctor. So he created um, living and workspaces for these engineers there also. From there, he moved to Sirsi, which was his mother's uh, farmland. That means his mother grew up on that farm, and he had a great love for it because 
all the holidays were spent in Sirsi, you know, pottering around in the fields and, you know, where all the fruits were growing and all. So he created a huge amount of infrastructure in Sirsi. And unfortunately, it's at, the, at about this time that he also, um, you know, uh, found out that he was in the last stage of cancer. Just between this period of two years of Sirsi, he got in touch with um, Bharat Electronics, BEL in Bangalore, and uh, to the extent where he was meeting the Krishna Kumar, the chairman, and all the other important people there, and he got a project going over there with uh, Pranjal and with BEL to do a Make in India project. So about three products were um, uh, went through, you know, because they have the fab and, you know, so many things happening over there, so they could use their men also. And in this um, Make in India produ product, uh, I've heard this um, motor drivers and um, I two, three things I don't have, I can't remember, but I know that they are going to make a big difference once they're out. So, uh, unfortunately, he began, he, you know, he said, I'm not going to die. I have a ton of work still left to do. And the cancer being what it was, the prognosis was just a few, three, four months after the chemotherapy session, a person is not going to live. So that is the track record of all those who had the same cancer. And he knew it, but you know he never, never, uh, you know, disclosed that part. Now I want to say something about this whole thing about his whole life that he lived. I want to say something that he lived. Uh, he went abroad to do his master. After uh, he finished his PUC, he came and did IIT Bombay. Finished. He was a first-class first holder all five years. He went to Brown in the U.S. on the uh, near Rhode Island, and after that, uh, Rhode Island, he worked in a military defense company, and then moved to um, PI Dallas. So he spent close to from seventy-two to ninety-eight, almost in the U.S. About twenty-five, thirty years, almost he spent over there. So then he returned back. So I'm looking at this whole journey. And I don't know y'all are such bright, brilliant, you know, engineering uh, people. And whether you would accept this or not, I don't know. But I've had this um, six months of living and reflecting backwards. So I, I just say that um, if you read life backwards, you can come to the beginning. And what I can see is, having lived abroad and having lived in those times when contact with India and Indians was very little and things were not available as they are today, you don't even feel, feel you're living in the US anymore. It was very different at that time. You know, and it was on the East Coast, it was cold, snowing and all that. So all that sort of, I, I think that he made this mental note that he didn't want to end up dead in the, that country, foreign country. So this, the journey backwards, forward, towards going back to the roots was 99, 89 he returned for a short time, and 99 he returned for almost everything, I mean his life. And then 99 he, keep, he kept on, you know, all these uh, spaces that he moved across. That was the work uh, he was able to give because that is what he learned, that is what he knew. His core abilities were, you know, best, uh, you know, shown over there. And he could work with people very well. So I would call all these Karmic and Pranjal and Sirsi and Everett BL and all, these are the spiritual spaces of that journey back home. You know, at every level, these were spiritual spaces. But it was. It was life began to uh, unfold along that the, the decision that was made. And um, you can say almost like Ulysses, you know, when he finished with all the wars and the conquests and the victories and returns back. And the traveler, the achiever, you know, returns back to the homeland. 
or the prodigal son or whatever you call it. So it might seem very preposterous to come up with this kind of a th thought, but I would just say that his core ability as a child was also tinkering, you know, with old radios, opening up TV sets, phones, anything, any old toys, playing with the children and creating things out of, you know, wood and mud and all that. I mean, that's what many of the family members told me, that once in that house they heard an explosion. He was mixing two chemicals or something in the bathroom. And so that was, that was him. And um, he came from a very uh, old and uh, well-to-do family. And they had a huge house with a huge land at the back. It's a homestead. It was a close-knit and a very large family. And they were all very close together. Now, I see that when the, when the documentary was shot, they take us to his primary school, which also had huge open spaces, you know. Then the military school where he studied in Belgaum as a standard five or a standard six boy, that is also over acres, 60 acres of land, and you know, each hostel is so far away from the other. The classrooms are somewhere else. The office is somewhere else. So you have to walk miles and miles from one place to the other for a little boy who was living in, you know, a dormitory and all. Then he goes after that to IIT, which is again a campus. Then he goes to Brown, which is again a huge campus, you know, buildings and buildings and buildings. And then he goes to a foreign land. PI is again huge campuses. So he basically loved small spaces. <coughs> This was probably a reaction to all that vast expanse where, you know, a person feels lost. So he used to love these small dark rooms, you know, to live in, like little cubby holes, you know, like a bear who goes into his cage. And uh, the, the, those are the dichotomies of his life. The, on one side, there was a lot of discipline, austerity from the father. And then there was a lot of sensitivity, warmth, and compassion from the mother. So all these dichotomies were present in him. And you will see that because, you know, though he was very um, well off, he on his own didn't want to show any sign of wealth. He wore all these old clothes. Everybody knows his loose trousers, you know, stitched at the back and his shirts with half torn pockets and no buttons half on the sleeve and all. And then um, he had this feeling for the underdog. He was always sorry for someone who had had a, you know, didn't get a good treatment. So what he felt was these Udupi Brahmins were not treating the Bujapuris who were building the buildings over there. And the Bujapuris were so poor. So he felt that. Say, British and Indian people, the dichotomy is there. And India and the Congress, the dichotomy was there. He was always in two dualities. Somewhere that was working him up and somewhere the stress was building up. The city and the village, the town and the, you know, the rich and the poor, the foreign country and the local land, the food, which was different, the speech was different, everything, but everywhere, luckily for him, he found wonderful guardians, lovely teachers, hosts and hosts who were very kind to him, they became his family, and he had letters writing across the globe, you know, to them. Till, till then, till late, so also the letters were coming, cards were coming from them. And um, he had his old teachers in uh, Belhungal. Maldu Raza was one of them. And then there was this old teacher in Dharwad who came to a hospital to see him and brought by Arun Bellari because Bellari, uh, I think, was his neighbor or something. And the old teacher asked for his hand. Mahant had was made to sit on a chair just before he came. So he was slowly taken out of the bed, made to sit on the chair. And he was covered with a blue sheet of that... Um, well, bed sheet, and there he was waiting for him, and this man comes in quietly, without a word, picks up his hands, and holds, he holds his hands and looks into his eyes, and sits, stands like that for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Just the warmth of the two, you know. This was his teacher who told us later that, you know, he was his math teacher, and how wonderfully, you know, this guy was almost a total brain where maths was concerned. He was very, very good. And um, I don't know this, this man I was married to, he had numbers pouring out of his head. He was sitting right 
hundred numbers on the blackboard and you know in what sequence and all it was. I couldn't figure out, you know, how we could do something like this. So I think I am not too sure whether I should continue anymore. But uh, the the very successful, the brilliant people always have something unique in them which makes them completely different from the rest of us. They choose a different path because of that that uh, that thing inside them, you know. So all I can say is, let us nurture that uniqueness if you come across it in anyone. Nurture it because it's very, very important that this uniqueness that is there, this something different that makes them behave like that, think like that, do things like that, that if you nurture it, nourish it, and encourage it, and you know, bring them up, that's what's going to make a critical difference to this country. That, that, that is what, that was he, you know, that gene pool in which, from where he came and what kind of, you know, from which planet has he come, which star has he come from, he was uh, unforgettable, he is unforgettable, he has touched every life, he has made a difference to every one of us, and he has, um, his last message in the hospital when everyone was pouring in was, you know, Keep the harmony, be, you know, the happiness is very important, keep bonded, keep in touch with all your old friends from Karmic, connect again, join and create WhatsApp groups and Facebook, connect back, come back and mentor the new students. Don't stop it, continue, let it continue forward and harmony, we kept on talking of harmony cooperation. I think that is what Karmic is known for in um, Bangalore and everywhere where Karmic students are gone. And uh, and once he told, uh, when some couples came to meet him, the first batch, he said, you know, uh, we had marriages within karmic, and there has not been a single divorce. His, his pr pride is very proud about that. Not a single karmic student who married uh, another karmic ever got divorced. So they were all happy couples because they played volleyball together, they ate together, they worked together, they fought together. They walk together. They did everything together. And even today, where though they are in far away parts of the globe, some are in Amsterdam, some are in Scotland, some are in the London, some are in the UK, US. So these, they say that every time they, you know, connect with another karmic, all the memories come flooding back. And you know, things are once more as um, as beautiful as it used to be. I think that is, they said, that's the best part of our life. I called it a finishing school, basically. So I said. You know, I don't think this is an industry you created. I think it's a finishing school, a halfway house. They've come from home and you created a home life feeling here. And from here to more, they have to go out into the world. So they are going to leave you. Why are you feeling so bad that they're leaving the company? Because the world is outside. The bad world is outside. They have to learn and go and chase. So now they're all doing so well. So I said, be proud of it. You have done so much, you have done all this. Nobody could have done what you did. And, um, and you know what? When I went back yesterday night, I was just on my WhatsApp to check whether the, the KPRC, the Pranjal group of Nekalji students had knew anything about it. And I was amazed, <laughs> just one minute, last. So I was amazed to find out that um, they were talking to each other, Ramesh and Nagesh and all. One of them had put up a diagram of some circuit and, and, uh, and asked which one has um, more current, this one or that one. And the other ones all got into the conversation. So there was a very heated, um, intense thought process going on about some technical things. So I said, you know what, Mahan, may have been in the gathering yesterday when the award was given, but he rushed back there to be with the Pranjal students who were exchanging those notes. That's where he was. That's why, you know, today I think he's not there. He's very busy because he's so happy. The Pranjal students are so intense in their, you know, technical discussions. And, um, you know, they're taking it forward in their own way. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Let
ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to request all of you to please uh, give the late Sri Dr. Shivling S. Manchetti a huge round of applause once again for his <laughs> tremendous contribution to society and to the industry. And uh, as I mentioned, he won the IESA Technovation Sarabhai Award 2017 last evening. We'd like to thank uh, Srimati Tasneem as well for those uh, heart-rendering words. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a lucky draw that was conducted by Wafer Space, and uh, they've already pulled out two winners. So I'd like to invite on stage uh, Mr. Manjanath SP, sales, uh, manager sales from Wafer Space, to hand over the, uh, the lucky prizes to the two lucky individuals. Kiran Kumar, Savandaya, Kiran Kumar, if you're here, there he is. Please give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And Latif Amir, Latif Amir, there he is. Please give him a big round of applause. The second of the two uh, lucky draw prizes sponsored by Wafer Space going out to Latif Amir. Congratulations once again to the both of you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're now going to move into the Makeathon Awards, and I'd like to invite on stage uh, Mr. Venkatesh uh, Kumaran, a Senior Director, Business Development, India Operations, arm, to take this forward. Good evening. Good evening. I know, I know we are at the fag end of the, uh, of the summit, but I think the most interesting part comes now, OK? All right, so I've been given the honor to kind of, uh, you know, uh, talk about the Makeathon event. Uh, IASA uh, started the first edition of the Makeathon Awards uh, three years ago. So this is the third edition, and I'm, I'm personally very, very, very happy to see the progress that we've made on Makeathon Awards. We started off uh, year one, three years ago, with some 35, 40 teams. Uh, you know, applying for Makeathon Awards. And I'm very, very happy to see that uh, this year we got almost like 88 applications, uh, team applications from all over India, right? So I think we need to give a big hand on this, right? This is wonderful. So, so for those of you who come in uh, to the Makeathon Awards and, and, and who are here for the first time, the objective of uh, running this event primarily was to enable the maker community in India. And that's something that IESC has done very, very, very well over the last several years. And uh, basically to drive technology innovation uh, for the electronic system design manufacturing industry in India. So I think this was an initiative that we took. And I'm very, very happy that it's kind of progressing very well. Uh, so this year, we selected about 29 teams. And we all we had more than 150 participants, and that was very, very nice to see them. Uh, you know, when we kickstarted it yesterday morning, and uh, you know, to uh, kind of let you know how they actually ran this, uh, I really want to thank uh, Nayaz uh, from the JU Incubator, uh, who actually kind of did this very well for us this year. I want him to come and share, uh, you know, how we actually did this. You know, uh, he's been spending a lot of time with IAS over the last three months. Uh, putting this whole thing together. So, Nayaz? Yeah, uh, thank you, Venki. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the honor. So, uh, in fact, uh, the Makeathon journey started uh, like two and a half, three months ago. So, when I uh, met Apu at some event, and uh, 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 coincidentally, Venki was also there, and we kind of uh, uh, pitched on what can we do for the, the Maker community, and can we do something uh, uh, probably in the coming uh, uh, Vision Summit. Uh, so as JU Incubator, we are a, a startup incubator recognized by Government of India and hosted by uh, one of the known universities uh, for entrepreneurship, which is Jain University. And we thought it would be a very right opportunity for us uh, to kind of uh, join hands with IESA uh, to do uh, a, a makeathon, uh, which could actually uh, uh, energize a lot of the uh, uh, students and entrepreneurs. So, uh, so the journey started there three months ago, and, and here we are. So in the meantime, what we also did was uh, 
Uh, we reached out to a lot of the ecosystem partners. We had uh, Your Story as our partner. We had Funtonic. Uh, we had a lot of the, our incubator companies and the startups which we interact with, like Passion Connect, Campus Time, uh, 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 to be kind of to spread the word. And uh, uh, the result was uh, we were able to, as, as Venki mentioned, uh, attract 88 uh, teams. And uh, you would be astonished to hear that we sitting here could attract. We had teams uh, right coming from uh, Jalandhar from in, in Punjab uh, to Faridabad near Delhi to uh, uh, Coimbatore, Karur to uh, uh, as close as Kanakpura Road here. And it was an amazing, uh, uh, amazing uh, 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 energy we could see in these students, the excitement they had. And that's where we started. And we thought that, uh, OK, we, there, we see a lot of these hack hackathons and makeathons where uh, uh, students and, and these aspiring entrepreneurs come up with ideas, right? So they come, and then they want to kind of get into uh, uh, started coding. They, they, they start soldering uh, circuits. But we thought, uh, let's not do that. Let's, let's kind of, we being an incubator as well, thought let's, let's uh, do what we do with a lot of these uh, uh, startup companies. And we thought this is the right time for a lot of these uh, engineering students uh, to gain that exposure. And the result of that was uh, we did a pre-event uh, on 26th, uh, day before yesterday, uh, at our campus uh, at JP Nagar. And uh, the morning session, uh, we had a uh, technical IoT workshop uh, where uh, our partners, uh, uh, Wiener Technology Solutions, they helped us to conduct uh, uh, the uh, workshop. Uh, so where they were, they actually ran some hands-on uh, 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 projects. So uh, by afternoon, uh, we had uh, a design thinking workshop. So this is something new for, for most of these guys. And the first question when I asked them, how many of you have heard about design thinking, none of them raised the hands. And, and that is what I was talking about when we say we want to build products. Uh, we want to build solutions, and we don't know for whom we are building these products and solutions for. And there was an extensive session, and uh, our, our guys, we had planned it till uh, 6.30 in the evening, but uh, our, our participants were so excited, they, they didn't let us go till 8.30, in the ni night. And uh, keeping in mind that they were supposed to come here at 8 a.m. Uh, yesterday. So, uh, so we actually had a lot of interactive uh, sessions in the design thinking. They identified the target audience. They identified the problems of those target audiences. Then they identified which could be the most probable solution which they would like to solve. And one of the experience I would like to share from one of the participants of design thinking workshop. Uh, so th they said that they had actually come up with an idea to the uh, uh, workshop. Uh, but after this design thinking workshop, they, they came up with a solution which they thought was much more uh, relevant, which was much more powerful than the idea they came with. So that was an amazing thing. So we stepped into day one, Makeathon yesterday. Uh, so uh, we kicked it off here. And uh, we actually didn't let them just uh, get back and get into these things, though they had a new perspective now of what they are building, why they are building it for. So during the course of the Makeathon, the 24 hours, so we had a lot of experts. We, we leveraged uh, uh, Apu's support here uh, to kind of get uh, a lot of the speakers here to come and share their uh, experiences, share their tips with a with lot of these uh, uh, known entrepreneurs. So, uh, and one of the things was also, uh, we had uh, support from a lot of the mentors, uh, which we not had, had arranged uh, uh, from Afterglow company. So we had a lot of these industry software engineers, hardware engineers coming in from different companies. Uh, so especially I would like to also thank uh, uh, Mr. Halesh, uh, so who actually kind of uh, did a lot of those uh, uh, concentration sessions for bringing them in. And I guess all of the Makeathon participants would, would, would cheer for him uh, when, when they hear his name. Yeah, so with that, uh, uh, so with that we, we had built very good solutions. So I, I would like to take you to, into a quick uh, a four minute video uh, to see what happened. So I want to just give you a real glimpse of what has happened. So can we uh, please uh, play the video? Makeathon was an event where I applied and Jan University Incubator gave an opportunity for me to 
think about my product in more detail. So today I came here, I got to know many flaws in my idea and how I can make it more better and what all, how the people think and putting myself in their shoes was the most important thing that I learned here. We just now had a design thinking workshop where we were told about how to design our problem, find the solution for the problem and make product out of it. We were told how easier it is to think in an open mind and get the product details, the solution for each thing and uh, how easy to build the product. This year since IAC 2018 has brought uh, more of uh, students from all over India, even from Punjab and uh, other places. Uh, there's uh, more of innovations I can see because uh, even the theme is IoT, that is the next uh, big thing in technology. And the mentors that have come this, uh, this time, they are, from, uh, they, are, they are best, I think. Uh, they, they are giving us great insight on uh, what, could actually, what we should actually do to get things uh, working in a rapid way and how we could scale it to a larger uh, proportion. And uh, there are lots of uh, industrial persons who are visiting here and uh, they are just guiding us how to implement it as a real IoT project and uh, marketing it. So uh, this is a very good opportunity for us to, like a, as a fresher, I'm telling this because uh, for me it is a very good opportunity so that I can know something and uh, I can even uh, start a startup company also. It's already been 12.45, hardly we left uh, 9 hours 36 minutes. But we still have it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you. So I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, uh, Apu. Uh, Venki, I'll take uh, uh, 30 more seconds. 
uh, thank Apu and IESA basically uh, uh, to give the to give us this opportunity, and and I hope uh, we will get a lot more uh, opportunities like like this. I'd like to thank all the mentors, all the jury uh, who came uh, this morning, spent uh, half a day uh, interacting with them, giving them the suggestions. And I would like to thank the mentors who spent the whole night, our partners, everyone. And especially, I would also like to thank my own team, uh, Vinay and Vidya, who are there uh, the whole night as well. Uh, and, and our registrar of Jain University, who is the director of the incubator, and our, our chairman, uh, Dr. Chain Raj Roychan. So with that, I would like to thank each, each one of the participants and everyone who had helped us in, in either ways. Thank you very much. Thank you all to you. Very good show. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Nayas. Thanks for all the hard work. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so I think it's time to uh, announce the winners of the Makeathon, right? Are you all ready, guys? Yeah, wonderful. So, uh, the second runner-up of the Makeathon third edition IESA uh, goes to NMIT Sparts. Can the team come over? But before that, can we have the uh, can we have Vishal Anand on stage? OSD Department of IT, Government of Bihar, please. Hi, Vishal. First runner up goes to Hack Knock. The team from Hack Knock. Are you here? Yeah, please. The winner, winner, the winning team goes to Tech Techins. Yeah, come on in. They don't seem to have believed that they won this megathon. So we do have a couple of special recognitions. Um, the DOST team. Can we put, up, put our hands together for the DOST team? Syntax Error. That's a nice name. Can you put a hand to them as well? Can you just stand up? Yeah, that's wonderful. That's nice. Jeevan Anand. Jeevan Anand. Wonderful. Can we, yeah, can we all put our hands together for, the, for Jeevan Anand? And Tri Space. Wonderful. The ones, that, ones right behind. So, with that, we come to the end of uh, the Makerton Awards. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, could we have a big round of applause for all the winners once again and uh, for all the participants as well. A huge round of applause for their tremendous effort. Congratulations uh, to the winning team, of course. Well, we've almost come to the end of the, uh, the event, but uh, how many of you uh, were here last evening for the lucky draw? Not a single hand going up. Well, I have news for you. If many of you weren't here, uh, your name was probably popping up on screen uh, a couple of times. So uh, you still have one chance to win because yesterday I did mention that we have a lucky draw at the end of uh, today. So we've got, uh, do we have it uh, coming up on screen? So it's a little different. It's an electronic uh, lucky draw. How many of you have been a part of an electronic lucky draw before? No hands again. So this is going to be uh, experience. And uh, this is what you stand to win. It's a Kindle. All right. So how many, how many of you are feeling lucky? Now a lot of hands going up. All right. Keep your fingers crossed. And we're going to have uh, the names pop up on the screen. They're trying to rig it. We're just trying to get the app running. Just give us a minute. We'd also like to uh, take this time to once again uh, mention uh, that the government of uh, Bihar was sponsors for the Macathon Award. So can we give them a big round of applause uh, as well? for their continued patronage and their support. And we'd like to thank uh, Mr. Vishal Anand, the OSE Department of IT, Government of uh, Bihar, once again. Is it up? All right, it's ready. So ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yes. Two, three of you ready. The rest of you can leave. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yes. All right, brilliant. Let's see how this works. We had a whole lot of names popping up yesterday, and many of you weren't there. Like I said, you probably would have won yesterday. Let's find out if uh, your name pops up on the screen now. We've got one Kindle, the second of uh, the two, going out to Rakesh Mohan Rangan. Is Rakesh here? Everyone who's happy Rakesh is not here, please give him a big round of applause. Okay, that's why it's called a lucky draw. You have to stay right till the end. Naresh Kumar. All right, everyone who was here yesterday is not here today. Madhumita Agarwal. Madhumita? No. All right. We're going to keep uh, this going till we find a winner. Ashok Mehta. Nikolesh K. Nikolesh. Not lucky. Sujit Joseph. Sujit, are you here with us? All right, let's keep this running. Rahul Arya. Rahul Arya? All right. Gopal Krishna. Gopal Krishna? Okay, you guys can relax. I think you're going to be here for <laughs> another hour or so. Mahindra P. Jain. Mahindra. Okay. Sanjay Gopinath. Sanjay Gopinath, not here either. Let's keep this going. Dr. Saroja Sidmal.
Murli S. Sheshadri. Murli, are you here? Okay, this is turning out to be unlucky for many. Naveen Rai. Rindu Shri. Rindu? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. A big round of applause because we have a winner. And an even bigger round of applause because the winner is this young lady. I'd like to request Mr. Ashwini, uh, the chairman of uh, IESA, to please come up on stage, sir. You can do the honors of giving away that Kindle to this very lucky young lady. Congratulations and happy reading. I'd like to uh, quickly call on stage Mr. Anil Kumar uh, Muniswamy, Vice Chairman IESA, to wrap up uh, this event. Good evening, friends. Once again, I'm here to do this uh, official uh, Thanksgiving ceremony. Uh, first of all, let me thank all the... Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Venki. Uh, let me thank all the winners of Makeathon Awards. It's a fantastic job. And uh, uh, last uh, couple of years, um, uh, whenever we are organizing this kind of events, uh, my secretariat comes and tells us that uh, this time, we are unable to find uh, you know, a sponsor for Makeathon Awards. Then we have to somehow do something and all that. But uh, we have uh, one uh, evangelist among us, Apu. <laughs> he somehow, he likes this event so much. Uh, he manages to get someone to do this. Worst case, he's even prepared to get some budget allocated from IES and do this event. So thank you, Apu, for this. And um, it's, a, it's quite... Uh, heartening to see this kind of participation. End of the day, end of the event, a lot of people. Thank you once again. So let me just uh, quickly um, thank all the people, those who are responsible for making this event a grand success. Uh, last uh, few years, uh, you know, it is always our uh, uh, wishful thinking that we should plan all the events well in advance and then put all the resources together and everything go everything should go very smoothly but it has never happened in fact year to year you know year by year it is getting bad to us in the past we used to do somebody one of our past ec members they were mentioning that in the past we used to do like this but why it became bad you know so always we are running against time and uh, you know, arranging uh, the speakers and uh, getting speaker confirmations and then putting the program together is a big challenge for us. It is like a chess game. And Surya is very good at it. They keep <laughs> changing the speakers. And then sometimes they push from morning to evening. And then she says, sir, he's not coming. What to do? Then we'll catch somebody else. But it's a very challenging job. So I, I really appreciate. But I give this entire credit to our EC because uh, it's a very tough job. and. All the work is done by them. The less time we have, so they have to work more. So, so many sleepless nights. Thank you very much. I just want to read out the names because uh, so many people have contributed for the success of this event. And of course, before that, uh, I would like to thank once again our sponsors. Their names are here. I read out all the names on the very first day. Thank you, all the sponsors, for your kind uh, support. And at IESA, I would like to thank uh, Abhishek, Apu Datta, I already mentioned, Aruna, Bharani, Bhavani, Chandrakala, and Gaurake Punjabi, Hepsita, Ramkrishna Hegde, Rajiv Jain, and uh, Rajiv Vadva from Delhi team, and Rupa, Surya Kala, I mentioned already, and Swayam Prakash, our accountant, you know, finance man, Swapna Singh, and Swapna R, Suman Pillai, Muthu, and Venkatesh, and um, I would like to thank all our uh, EC members. They actually gave a lot of support, you know, standing behind the curtains. And uh, in fact, the last couple of days, let me tell you, when uh, you people were arranging all these things, actually, we spent very little time in organizing this event. The credit goes to the EC and, uh, you know, uh, our members and Hyderabad team, all these people worked very hard. But what we were doing at EC, uh, we used to sit, uh, you know, in a room and then discuss about 
the future and how we can make this event better, maybe next year and the years to come. And uh, if any member has any suggestions, they can always write to us and send us an email saying that these are the things we would like to see in uh, EC, uh, you know, Vision Summit next year. This is what we did uh, for the last uh, two days. Uh, in fact, I spent very little time in networking with pe people and uh, even our EC members, they were all very busy doing this kind of work. And um, I would like to thank um, um, our EC members, uh, Jitendra Chadda, uh, Rajiv Kushu, Rajesh Krishnan, Vivek Pawar, Ram Reddy, uh, Niranjan Paul, Vivek Sharma, Sompal Chaudhary, Ashwini Agarwal, our chairman, and Krishnamurthy, our past chairman. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, some of our uh, past chairmen and, uh, and uh, past EC members also, uh, those who supported this event. I, I can't read all the names, but uh, uh, whoever I can you know, recollect their names, Satya Gupta, and Sanjeev Keskar, Jaswinder Ahuja, B.V. Naidu, and a lot of, all of them, you know, they have uh, helped us. And um, particularly, <laughs> our Venki, <laughs> from Arm, and uh, Guru Ganeshan, <laughs> they really gave a lot of uh, support to us, and uh, Hyderabad team. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if I've covered all the names, but uh, once again, I would like to thank our members who came and attended this event in great, uh, you know, uh, participation. They had, uh, they showed a lot of spirit and, you know, uh, our uh, uh, members who took the booths and exhibited their products and all the startup companies, they did a great job. And participants of Makathon event and uh, our um, uh, supporter, uh, Jane College, right? So thank you very much, sir, for your support. And all the logistics uh, support we got from the hotel and our uh, uh, partners for this, um, you know, uh, public relations and um, all the technical support. Thank you very much once again, and we'll see you next year. And what about the dates for the next VC? We, huh? It's already announced. Ah, 26th and uh, 26th, 27th, 2019, February. Yes, <laughs> I was expecting this to flash on the screens. So uh, this, this time we are getting one full year time. I want all your support to make the next VC a very big event and successful event. And as I said uh, earlier, we want your feedback. How we can improve this and uh, what better things we can do and what are your expectations from this VC other than networking that always happens. So please send your uh, feedback to us. We are waiting for that. Okay, thank you very much once again. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Please block your calendar. So, <laughs> so this is the work of our secretariat. <laughs> Invest into your brand, okay. Yeah, so we'll promise you that uh, since we know the dates and we start uh, engaging with our, uh, uh, you know, partners and sponsors, uh, we will ensure that uh, whenever we send out any communication to our um, you know, um, uh, potential partners and uh, event uh, management team. And uh, we are also going to contact foreign, uh, you know, uh, participants well in advance because most of these people, especially, uh, you know, coming from east or west, they need a lot of uh, advance notice so that they can create some, uh, you know, budgets for this uh, visit, also for sponsorships. So your name will be mentioned in this, all those emails, and it's a good uh, opportunity for branding your companies. Please take advantage of this. Thank you very much.